Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are back with another Pioneer video. And today, we're gonna be talking about the best potential Pioneer reprints for Magic Foundations. So, what is Magic Foundations for those who haven't heard? So, Magic Foundations is a new, essentially, a core set coming back to standard, and it's gonna be legal for five years in standard. So, through 2029, it's gonna be a sweet set they used to do core sets all the time but you know like regular sets they rotated as standard went along but not this one five full years is going to be legal so what does that have to do with pioneer so what's cool with this set is there's going to be a ton of new cards and there's going to be a whole bunch of reprints and i want to talk about a handful of cards that i think could potentially be in magic foundations that would be perfect for the format perfect for new players and really just beneficial for everyone so before we hop into the cards here i want to show off a couple of the cards here so these are the two new cards that they showed off here. I'm not going to be going over them today. I just wanted to show you what cards these are in case you hadn't seen them yet. But the main thing I want to talk about is the reprints that they showed off. So two of the reprints are already legal in Pioneer. Lana Rolves and Omniscience, nothing crazy about that in terms of Pioneer. But Day of Judgment is not in the Pioneer format, but it's coming to the format once the set comes out in November. So when I saw Day of Judgment, it got me thinking, okay, what could they actually reprint that would be perfect for Pioneer and Standard uh, in Magic Foundation? So a little bit of criteria before we hop into the list here, which there's going to be 10 cards. The one thing I wanted was I wanted the cards to be relatively simple in terms of mechanics. I didn't want any super complex cards. And the other thing is I want the cards to be strong so that way they hold up in Standard. So, you know, obviously it's going to be legal for five years. So we need these cards to be on a you know the power level needs to be on par with what's coming out in the current standard environment which is pretty strong so if people buy all these cards you know like even like now or even you know four or five years into this set we want them to still be able to compete at least you know at an fnm level with the other decks in standard so i tried to pick some cards that are relatively simple you know no crazy mechanics but also very strong and obviously in terms of this video new to the pioneer format so Let's go ahead and hop in here. All right, number 10. I have Goblin Bushwhacker. So a couple of reasons I have this card. One, it is a very strong red card in low to the ground red aggro decks, including like goblins and eight whack and things like that. And we already have Reckless Bushwhacker in the format. So I think it'd be pretty cool to have it. Second reason, it's a pretty easy mechanic. You got the one, one for one, but you can pay the kicker red and get an additional ability, obviously giving your creatures 1-0 in haste. So I think Goblin Bushwhacker would be sweet in pretty much any red aggressive deck. It would be perfect for, you know, even if you don't even have a Goblin deck, let's say you just like someone opens a Magic Foundation, a whole bunch of packs, and they just have a red deck, boom, Bushwhacker is absolutely perfect for the deck and also perfect for Pioneer. So that's why I have Goblin Bushwhacker at number 10. Number nine, I have Electrolyze. So there's a couple of reasons why I want Electrolyze in the format. One, I've been talking about this entering the format for literal years. It, like, I, I can't believe they haven't done it yet. The second reason I want it on here is it's already programmed on Arena. It was in the Strixhaven Mystical Archives set, so it's already programmed on Arena. They just have to, you know, maybe do like the original art with like a new frame and boom, that's it. They don't actually act, have to program the card, which I think is really, really huge. Third reason being... Although, you know, they used to not do multicolor cards, um, but in the recent core sets they have, I think this card encompasses a lot of what is it is all about. You got the red side, obviously, that deals the two damage. You got the blue side of it that's drawing the card. It just shows, you know, what play, you know, what is it X are all about. You know, you got your Goblin Electromancer, let's say, you got your Electrolyze, you got some other like random counterburn things. I think it would be perfect to show new players, hey, well, like, is it? I like this. It's dealing the damage and drawing cards. It's sweet. Electrolyze is a sweet card and that's why it's number nine on my list all right number eight i have intangible virtue so i'm gonna be honest with you i think that this is the card that's probably the least likely to actually be in the set and the reason i say that is because for those who are paying attention for the new cards that i showed off they already have an anthem at rare so i don't think that this is going to be reprinted in the set but we're going to talk about it as if you know there's still technically a chance there's no reason they can't have two anthems in the set but I would love Intangible Virtue for multiple reasons. One, token decks are sweet and new players love token decks. Heck, even experienced players love token decks. Everybody loves token decks. The second thing is, once again, similar to Electrolyze, it's already programmed on Arena. It was in the Wilds of Dream bonus sheet, so they don't have to go through and program it. Like, obviously, make, you know, do like the original art with a new border and everything. But they don't have to program it on Arena, which I think is gigantic. So, that's why I'd like to see Intangible Virtue. You know, you put some different token cards on here. 
you got all these sweet token decks that are already kind of floating around in standard and probably will exist you know into standard for the next couple of years i think intangible virtue would be sweet and that's why it's number eight on my list all right number seven i have mana leak so i know what you're thinking like most people already thought mana leak you know like oh i saw the you know the uh the thumbnail there we know mana leak was going to be on the list and yeah you're right obviously multiple reasons why i want mana leak so one mana leak is on par in my opinion with how standard and pioneer already is right now we already have like some situational mana leaks where it's like it's you know like the flat rate is worse but then the ceiling is higher than mana leak you know like the the toxic one where it's counter you pay two but you know if if they have three more poison like it's just countered and then you got like lofty denial you've got things like geist light snare so we already have you know essentially better mana leaks in a way but again the reason i like this there's no set mechanics tied to it it's just a vanilla counter spell but it's a, it's a good vanilla counter spell there's no additional text there's no crazy weird wording it's just the basic mana leak counter it unless they pay three it's really simple it's strong and that's why i want it in magic foundation so number seven is mana leak number six and this one might be a little bit of a controversial one is rancor i would love to see rancor come back so m13 was basically the cutoff so there's a lot of cards from m13 that i wish were in the format and they're unfortunately not but i would love to see rancor for multiple reasons one it would be very nice in pioneer not only would like some of like the gruel slick shot decks and like mono green ish aggro decks play it and it would be very good they those so specifically mono green stompy really needs help mono green stompy hasn't been relevant for at least a couple years in the format just because of just again you know with how removal is in the format and like the creatures they've been getting a little bit better but they're not quite on par with how good the removal is right now and i think rancor would help those decks get a little bit of reach or not literal reach but just get a little bit better and that's why i'd love to see rancor and number six I, I think it would be perfectly fine for the format people are already playing audacity which is already a pretty solid card in its own right and rancor i think is a little bit better you maybe even play both in specific decks but i would love to see rancor in the format it's simple great for new players and that's why i wanted it number six all right so now we're reaching top five territory here number five i have loam lion slash curd ape so the thing is with loam lion and curd ape is i'm not seeing necessarily exactly these cards i would love to see at least one of these for sure not probably not both it would be a little weird to have them in the same set but i would love to see a cycle like this return so um, obviously they haven't done a full cycle like, th like this in a long time. It's been since like M15, but you know, there was like Sunblade Elf and then there was like Curd Chieftain where, you know, they have these creatures with, that's a monocolor creature, but it gets plus one or plus two if you have, um, a different basic land type. And then it has a, uh, activated ability of that other type. So it kind of incentivizes players to play multicolor decks. And I think that would be perfect for this set. So obviously low mine, you get your one, one for one. But then it's one plus one plus two if you control a forest. So then it's like, okay, well, maybe I should dive into a multicolor deck. So it's good for players that just have their white deck. I'm not going to sit here and tell you a one, one for one is really, really good. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that. But at least if they have a white deck, they only have a handful of cards, they can play a one, one for one. But then if they decide later down the road, they want to start splashing into green and play some other colors, then boom, they get Loam Lion where it's a two, three for one. So that's kind of the idea. I'd like to see them make an entire cycle of this, but specifically Loam Lion or Curd Ape returning would be fantastic. I would love to see it. So that's why I've got Loam Lion and Curd Ape at number five. Number four, I have Wall of Omens slash Wall of Blossoms. Similar to, you know, Loam Lion Curd Ape, I would love to see one of these return. There's some actually pretty cool wall decks that are in Pioneer. Unfortunately, they just don't quite, they just don't have enough legs for the most part. And I think Wall of Omens and Wall of Blossoms would help a little bit with that. There's some cool wall shenanigans you can do, but in addition to that i think these cards would just be good like there's a decent chance that blue white control would maybe just play wall of omens because it's an 04 blocker that draws a card i don't know i think it definitely would be pretty solid none of these cards have been in standard in quite some time and i think it'd be really cool for them to not only return to standard but also be a legal in the pioneer format so i've got wall of omens and wall of blossoms at number four all right top three territory here number three technically is more than one card but i have a three mana well not even necessarily a three mana but a lord cycle that i would love to see return so i would love to see reprints would it be cool to get some new lords of course but i really want to see these five specific lords return so we have knight exemplar other knights get one one indestructible 
fantastic in any night deck. There's a whole bunch of night cards that are currently in standard. There's probably going to be some more coming up in standard. It'd be perfect. Mirror Regery. We do have some Merfolk that are going to be legal for another couple of years, but I think the card would just be good in general. Throw some Merfolk in the core set and foundations as well, and then boom, you can play Merfolk. Vampire Nocturnus, also perfect, a nice Vampire Lord. Vampires really doesn't have a lot of good lords for the most part in the format, and I think Vampire Nocturnus would be awesome for those decks. And then for the red and green one, I have Goblin Chieftain, which again, one of the ones that's not legal uh, in Pioneer or Standard, but it would be perfect. And then I also have Elvish Arch Druid as well. You know, you got like the Priest of Titania mixed with a Lord in there. I think it would be absolutely perfect. I would love to see these Lords return. Again, I wanted to pick one of each color. So it was like most of them were like in an M12 cycle, but I really liked Mirror Regery better than the other Lord, which I don't remember what it does, but it's really not that good. I didn't want to give anything with like Landwalk or anything. I wanted to play just like will pick just relatively simple lords so those are the lords i picked number three i would love to see some of them return all right number two and this i think this is probably the most controversial one on the entire list number two i have rampant growth so i know i know what you're thinking like two minute ramp that's like that's like way too good like we don't want rampant growths and stuff in the format all right so hear me out magic as a whole the game has gotten more it has gotten stronger standard has gotten stronger you know recently especially like in terms of you know power creep than it used to be i mean yes rampant growth used to be very very good you know where you could go turn two rampant growth and turn three hunt master of the fells and like you could do things like that that doesn't cut it anymore in the current format like sure like oh well atraxa would be so good with the rampant growth okay well they already have topiary stopper which is arguably better they still have the invasion so they're still gonna ramp into crazy so i, I don't think that's a relevant argument at least for that like with rampant growth again spells are getting stronger it would be okay for rampant growth to return we're getting all these like pseudo rampant growths where it's thunder herd migration so if you're playing dinosaurs then you get a rampant growth and then it's like we have the uh the cave one glimpse the core where it just grabs a forest and it's like just give us rampant growth just do it it's pretty good people can play in their modern green deck they can play in their blue green their black you know, they're black green, they're white green, they're red green. They can play into any of their green decks. It would be solid. It gets them from two to four mana so they can start playing their, you know, medium green, you know, four drops that they want to play in the format. I don't know. I think Ramper Growth would be perfectly fine. It also, would it see play in Pioneer? Yes, it would definitely see play in Pioneer. Would it be too good? I don't think so. I'm not asking for, um, what's the other one? Farseek? I'm not saying we're going to grab Triomes or, you know, like the the Surveil Lands or anything. It's just Rampant Growth. It's just basic lands. So, that's why I have Rampant Growth at number two. So, all right. Number one. For those who are long-time viewers of the channel, you probably know what this card is going to be. So, hear me out. Let me explain why I have Thundermaw Hellkite at number one on the list. Okay, so I've been talking about this card, wanting it to be legal in Pioneer for years at this point. Since I've been starting, since I started the channel, I've been talking about it for forever. But real quick, let me just hear me out why I think this should be legal and should get reprinted in uh, Magic Foundations. All right, so the first reason I think this should be legal in Pioneer number one, this is the only one of the five mana Flying Haste Dragons that is not actually legal in Pioneer. So obviously you've got like Stormwrath Dragon, Glorybringer, Skargon Hellkite, you have Goldspan Dragon. All of those are legal except for Thundermaw Hellkite. And it's the original one. It totally deserves to be in Pioneer. Number two, this card at its heart is a really, really simple card in terms of design. It's a 5-5 five, five for 5 with Flying and Haste. When it enters, it deals 1 damage to each creature with Flying. Your opponent's control, tap those creatures. It's a simple design. And the third thing being, it's a powerful design. It's simple and powerful, which is perfect for core sets. New players, obviously, like, they see the card and they're like, oh my god, this card is sweet. You got the sick art, you know, it's five mana, five, five, flying in haste. It's just, it's a fantastic card. It's perfect for a set like Magic Foundations. The second to last reason, actually, why I think it all should be in Foundations is... We are going back to Tarkir very, very soon. And with us going back to Tarkir, it makes sense to add another dragon to help with the dragon synergies that are going to presumably come out with Tarkir. You know, whether or not you're playing like an aggro deck, a mid-range deck, a control deck, all the decks will like Thunderbolt Hellkite. Okay, it'll be absolutely perfect. So that's another reason. The last reason, and this isn't even so much a reason why I think it should be in there. This is why I think it might be in there is because Brian Kibler was actually a consultant 
four magic foundations. You know, maybe slipped a note to somebody in Wizards like, hey man, put Thunder Mahal Kite in there. He loves Thunder Mahal Kite. Probably, you know, one of the most well-known people that played Thunder Mahal Kite. So, you know, maybe he convinced Wizards like, hey, you should just put this in the set. Be sweet. I want to play it in Pioneer. Who knows? But that's why I think number one, Hell, this Thunder Mahal Kite. I think it should just be in the format. Wizards, just do me a favor. Really do the whole internet a favor so I can quit talking about it. Just put Thunder Mahal Kite in Pioneer. Just do it. I mean, I would just, I, I probably, I wouldn't complain for at least a day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I probably wouldn't complain probably ever again, to be honest with you. But please, Wizards of the Coast, just put Thunder Mahal Kite in Pioneer. Just make my, you know, century and just please do that for me. So, I have Thunder Mahal Kite number one on the list for Pioneer reprints. That could be in Magic Foundation. So, last thing I want to talk about here, we got the wrap-up. So, the biggest thing here is let me know in the comment section below. Not only, like, in terms of, you know, what I put as my list, but what do you think should be legal in, uh, not legal in Pioneer, but what do you think about this set? Like, as a whole, you know, do you like that they're going to be doing this five-year standard set? Do you not like it? I guess, what are your opinions on the entire set? I have to imagine it's going to be mostly positive, but I guess just let me know in the comment section below. I want to know what you think. I'm very curious to see as what everyone here thinks about Magic Foundations. I'm personally excited for it. I love core sets because it gives Wizards of the Coast an excuse to do some spicy reprints without having to care about the lore or what plane they're on personally. So I'm always very excited about core sets. So just let me know in the comment section below what you think about that. And that takes us to the end of the video here. Thanks so much for watching. Huge shout out to our channel members, Ralph, Matt, Arcadius, Ray, Gary, and Serwanoki. If you are interested in being a channel member, it's only one US dollar a month. You get access to the exclusive Discord as well as other features here on the channel. So I'm Commander Crane. Thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.